A trail ride with an old equine friend can bring on a flood of emotions. In this episode of Barn Stories, you'll experience them all. Welcome to the Barn Stories podcast. I'm Lori Prins, editor of Equus Magazine. And I'm managing editor Christine Barakat. This podcast features our favorite essays and articles published in Equus over the past 40 years. Although Equus is known for articles on horse care and veterinary research, our editorial mission has always been guided by the bond that exists between horses and people. And each issue has featured a real life story that celebrates how horses enrich our lives and touch our hearts. We've searched our archives, chosen the stories that resonated with our readers, and given them new life in this audio format. Longtime subscribers may recognize some of their favorite pieces. And if you're new to the Equus community, these stories will confirm that no matter what sort of saddle you sit in, a deep emotional connection to horses is something we all share. The essay in this episode captures the many emotions that riding an older horse can evoke. In one moment, you're grateful to have one more adventure with your old friend. Then, in the very next, you're worried that you're asking too much, and maybe you should go back to the barn. Anyone who's ever owned a horse in their twilight years will be able to relate. The ride described in this essay isn't a placid mosey around a field, though. It's challenging in some specific ways, and a younger horse may not have dealt with everything quite as well as Milady, the horse in the essay, does. As you listen, you'll start to feel the tension her rider felt, then relief as things go well, and finally, exhilaration just as if you'd had one more ride on a very special horse. So let's listen to To Challenge the Wind, written by Judy Willman and read by Taylor Autumn. I walk out to the barn with a combination of enthusiasm, apprehension, and fear. Not the usual mixture of emotion before an ordinary trail ride. But nowadays, riding the lady is never ordinary. And it's not like it used to be. She will be 36 in the spring. It used to be that when we would take off on a ride, we would be down the driveway before I could take three breaths. Milady was eager to meet every challenge. Hills needed to be charged up. Down trees were to be jumped. If we were with another horse, Milady had no patience for doddlers and no tolerance for one who might try to take the lead from her. It wasn't that she was hard to control. It was like having a small black steam engine under you that would explode into action at the slightest touch. As she headed past 30, she started to slow down. Still, she approached me eagerly when I came out for a ride. Clearly, she wanted to go, and I was happy to oblige her as long as she remained able. But each time I couldn't help but wonder, would this be the last ride? How much did I dare ask her to do? What if something happened and she died on the trail? Only last year, as we were rounding a turn, I saw a tree lying across our path. She saw it too, and I could feel her begin to gather herself. I wondered, do I let her jump it? Do I stop her? Where's the line between keeping her safe and letting her enjoy life? I let her jump. She did fine, and we moved on. I walk into the corral now, and once again, Milady comes to me, her ears forward. She's ready to go once again, and I lead her in. Grooming her is not the same either. There's no longer a basic roundness to her body. Her muscle mass is shrinking, and her bones are more pronounced. She doesn't balance as well when I clean her feet, but I feel her nose resting gently on my shoulder, a ritual that we have shared since she was a gangly-legged foal. I catch myself wondering how many times like this we have left, and my eyes fill, but I shake it off. This ride is about enjoying a companionship that's still here. Grief has no place in it. As your horses age, it's easy to keep them comfortable with Buteless. Buteless is a proven supplement that supports daily comfort and recovery of both active and retired horses. Plus, Buteless uses a blend of natural ingredients like Devil's Claw, Yucca, and Vitamin B12. Designed for long-term use, Buteless is gentle on the stomach and is intended to be given every day with your horse's feed. Buteless supports a healthy inflammatory response to help your horse live their most comfortable lives every day. Gentle on the stomach and packed with powerful relief for daily aches, Buteless keeps horses moving comfortably with just one scoop per day. At last, she is saddled up and we leave the barn together. Bad weather is approaching, 
and the forecast calls for the storms to begin this afternoon, with increasing winds and light showers turning into heavy rain. If I'm going to get Milady out at all this week, it pretty much has to be now. At the moment, the skies are clear with no wind, and I plan to get back before the weather closes in on us. We start down the driveway. It is deep autumn, and many of the leaves have started to turn, but are still on the trees. The approaching storm will likely change that. We move carefully down the drive and along the gravel road towards the trail system, and gradually, Milady's steps become surer. One of the things that has always fascinated me about riding in the fall is those moments when everything is just quiet and the trail in front of you is as calm and still as a painting or a photograph. And then, suddenly, with no logical cause, a shower of leaves lets go and drifts down. There's no wind, and yet still the leaves dance forward. I see that happen ahead of us, and I can't help but smile. But then, the wind picks up. Suddenly, we are riding through a swarm of maple helicopter seeds, whirling and spinning around us like dragonflies. Milady has leaves in her mane, but she quickens her pace and carries her head higher. Strong gusts catch the trees, whipping the upper branches. I hear the occasional sharp cracks of breaking limbs in the distance and I begin to wonder if riding today was a mistake. We reach the point where the trail crosses a road. A river of small, dried leaves comes at us, like an invasion of cockroaches audibly skittering down the pavement. I marvel as Milady walks nonchalantly through them, because the sensation makes my stomach turn. Back on the trail, the gusts of wind are getting stronger. Milady is starting to get anxious. She crosses the wooden bridge at a trot and picks up a brief canter on the other side. For a few moments, I remember the grace and the thrill of her speed. Then I hear a series of groans and watch the treetops sway wildly ahead as a resounding crash echoes back to us. I slow Milady to a walk and wonder what I would do if I saw a tree falling in our direction. She no longer has the speed to accelerate or the agility for sharp turns. But the tree ahead had broken as it fell, and sticks out about halfway across the trail. We walk around it and go on. The cracking sounds continue, more frequently now, and I am wishing we were home. But I can't ask Milady to go any faster than her balance and stamina will allow. I briefly wonder how much wind it would take to push her over. Another tree has fallen across the trail ahead of us. It's a pretty large one, but this time I feel no gathering underneath me. Milady has chosen to walk across it, and I sincerely hope she can lift her feet high enough and keep her balance for this kind of obstacle. We make it, and I realize I've been holding my breath. Finally, we're back on the gravel road, heading home. By now, rain is starting to fall. Milady begins to call for her companions, her whinnies getting more frantic until we reach the driveway and she gets an answer. Somewhere behind us, I hear something else crack and crash on our neighbor's property. We are wet, we are windblown, and we're shaken. But once again, we have made it safely home. I suppose some people would question the wisdom of that ride and I would be the first to admit that it was a risky choice. But it was also triumphant. For one more day, I had the sense of being able to shake my fist in the face of growing old and say, you see, our lives are not over yet. And it was gratifying that I had gathered the courage to help a beloved companion hold on to some normalcy and a life that was changing beyond her control. It's what we do when we love. We grit our teeth and step out of our comfort zone. And together, we challenge the wind. Thanks for listening to Barn Stories. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have a favorite article or essay from the Equus Archives that you'd like us to feature in a future podcast, let us know. You can reach us at Equus Barn Stories, all one word, at gmail.com. Did you enjoy this episode of Barn Stories? 
head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave us a review. Thanks for listening. The Barn Stories Podcast is a production of the Equine Podcast Network, an entity of the Equine Network.